Um, Mr. Chairman, I'm, I'm not sure I can do better than Senator Cotton, and I'll try not to repeat what he just said. Um, even a cursory examination of um, Mr. Kasabai's record and his testimony before this committee, I think demonstrates to most fair-minded Americans that he is from the loon wing of the American bar. Now, that is his right as an American. Um, you're not free if you can't express yourself. You're not free if you can't say what's on your mind. But it is clear to me, based once again on an examination of his record and his testimony, that Mr. Kasabai is not qualified to be a federal judge because of his partiality. And I believe that his decisions will be filtered through his own political, social, and economic beliefs. Senator Cotton um, was very eloquent in giving you some specific examples. I want to give you one more. Mr. Kasabai is a magistrate. He issued an order, not an, not an oral directive, but an order to all employees in his court, to all witnesses in his court, and to all lawyers in his court that they address the court in a specific way and that they include their preference for pronouns, which, as we all know, um, is a reflection of one's thoughts about gender. This is a copy of the order. I think everyone has a copy. This is what his written order directs, for example, to his criminal docket clerk. Quote, I'm quoting the order. Not, not, not the suggestion, the order. Before calling the first case, give the general instruction, quote within quote, I'd like counsel to introduce themselves giving me your full name and your honorific, such as Ms., Mix, or Mr. Not Mrs., not Miss. And if your client will be making an appearance, I ask you to please introduce them to the court by giving me their full name and their honorific, such as Ms., Mix, or Mr. Mr. Kasabai says this is voluntary. That's not true. And he knows it. He intentionally misled this committee. Uh, he uses directives like, please be sure to give the honorific. Um, I could, you, you can read the document for yourself. I would feel the same way if Mr. Kasabai directed everyone in his court, and frankly, I could see him doing it, to stand up and give me your name and tell me about your race. I would feel the same way if Mr. Kasabai uh, issued a directive to tell everyone in his courtroom, you have to give your name and your religion, and you have to give me your feelings about Israel. And have, you have to give me your, your uh, details about your ethnicity. And you have to give me details about your sexuality. All of the things that bring the issue of partiality to the forefront, Mr. President. I'm appalled that President Biden nominated this gentleman. Now again, 
when I asked Mr. Casabon committee, he said, oh, this is volunteer. Well, it's not. Here's the document. You can read it for yourself. And if he's confirmed, there will probably be more directives about how litigants and their lawyers and his court personnel have to address the court. But imagine, let's, let's assume it is voluntary. Imagine you're a litigant whose property or liberty is at stake. And the man in front of you who is going to decide your fate tells you that he wants you to give your personal pronouns. And you don't want to do that. You'd rather not participate in that. You don't mind if others do it, but you personally don't want to do it. You've got to make a decision. Do I stick with my beliefs, or do I try to curry favor with this judge who's going to decide my freedom or uh, make a decision about my freedom or my property? That is the classic definition of bias. And that, Mr. President, Mr. Chairman, rather, will be why I'll be voting no on Mr. Kassabat. I want to emphasize again, I'm not criticizing his beliefs. He's entitled to those beliefs. If you want to be a member of the loon wing of the Bar Association, that is your right as an American. But it, it, it doesn't give you the right to bring those, that bias to the federal bench. Thank you for the time, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Senator.